Anglo-American suspended production at its Grosvenor steelmaking coal mine in Queensland. This follows an underground coal gas ignition incident over the weekend. Anglo says the mine team is working with specialist teams from the Queensland Mines Rescue Service and the, regula the regulatory authorities to extinguish the underground fire. Production from Anglo's steelmaking coal business was pegged at 15 to 17 million tons for 2024, of which Grosvenor was expected to contribute about 3.5 million tons. Anglo says an update to steelmaking coal production guidance will be provided once more information is available. Clix is lightening its portfolio. The group will dispose of its shareholding in its subsidiary, Unicorn Pharmaceuticals, and says it's confident the sale will be completed by the end of this month. The disposal follows a protracted legal process dating back to March last year, which related to Clix's ownership of pharmacies and a drug manufacturer. The Constitutional Court had ruled that the company had contravened Pharmacy Act regulations and the Department of Health halted the issuance of new retail pharmacy license applications while it waited for Clicks to comply. To resolve that matter, Clicks proposed offloading its shareholding in Unicorn, which has now been given the green light. Orion Minerals has announced a capital raise of over 92 million rand to help advance its two main projects, Prisca Copper Zinc and Okeep Mines. The miner says firm commitments had been received for a placement of about 513 million shares at an issue price of 18 cents per share. Orion's MD and CEO Errol Smart says with the two bankable feasibility studies for Prisca and Okeep now imminent, this capital raise allows work to continue on preparation for commercial mining and on exploration. Core Potash has raised nearly $1.3 million following a share subscription. The firm which owns the Cola and DX Potash projects in the Republic of Congo issued 91.8 million new shares to existing and new investors. It says the proceeds will be used to advance COLA towards the signing of an engineering procurement and construction contract and to provide working capital for that project. Huleman has selected a new CFO. Pravashni Nergen will take up the position. She has been serving in an interim capacity and following a comprehensive selection process, the aluminium supplier and exporter has decided to make her permanent. A statement from Huleman says that Nergen brings a wealth of experience to the position, having previously held a senior role at Vodacom. Further afield, manufacturing activity across the Eurozone took a turn for the worse last month. This is as demand fell uh, at a much a faster pace, despite factories cutting their prices. Here's more detail in this package report. The Eurozone's manufacturing woes deepened during June. The closely watched Purchasing Managers Index, or PMI, showed manufacturing activity across the block fell to 45.8 last month. That was well down from May's 47.3, but slightly ahead of analyst forecasts. It also continues a two-year run below the 50 mark, separating growth from contraction. One leading analyst from Hamburg Commercial Bank wasn't too downhearted. He said he was inclined to see this as a temporary blip rather than a sign of a prolonged downturn. He added manufacturing growth was seen in other parts of the world in June, including the US, Britain and India, and believed this provided a supportive backdrop for Eurozone manufacturers. A new orders index dropped to 44.4 from 47.3. That came despite factories cutting prices charged for a 14th month, although less steeply than in previous months. News aside, after two weeks of rigorous negotiations, Ramaphosa has finally appointed members of Cabinet for the seventh administration. And joining me to discuss this further is Business Day TV reporter Ndao Leng Lichela. Thank you so much for your time and for joining us in studio in Ndao Leng. Now, as we get started, just take us through some of the prominent appointments and really uh, what you took of note of there. 
Thanks, Zinati. So as you've rightfully pointed out, it's been a hectic few weeks for the country as President Ramaphosa tries to seal a GNU deal with the rest of the parties that have made it into parliament. At the moment, we have about 11 parties in the GNU and Ramaphosa has been trying hard to accommodate everyone in the cabinet. Now, this has resulted in an even, even bigger government. Um, at the moment, we have about 32 members for in cabinet from 30 as well as 43 deputy ministers from 36 now this comes at a time of course where the fisc is, is under pressure and you know you have analysts and everyone asking where is the money going to come from to sort of um, fund this bigger government and by global standards this is a very large uh, government Senate. now each minister has a staff of about 10 and um, deputies have a slightly smaller staff some of the most notable um, appointments are DA leader John Stian Hazen in the Ministry of Agriculture. Now you will you would have known that um, most had assumed that uh, Stian Hazen would take up the deputy presidency, yes, yes, yes. but Ramaphosa has decided to stick with his guns and stick with Paul Mashatile in that ministry. Um, ANC's Park Stawu has taken up a uh, Patel spot in the Department of Industry, Trade and Competition. Ronald Lamula is stepping into big shoes, filling in for Naledi Pando in the Department of International um, Relations. Big shoes to fill there. Mm. You would have known Pando has been very, very vocal, especially with what has been been happening in um, Israel and Palestine. We also have um, home affairs being taken up by the DA's Leon Schreiber. Um, in that department, there have been issues around visa reforms. We've had big business. People like Busi um, Mavusa cry out around um, visa reforms within the country. So it'll be interesting to see how the DA tackles that. Mm. Well, you spoke about the state of the fiscus right now. And of course, a big influencer of that is the economic cluster, which uh, the ANC has basically kept it to itself. How has that been received? Well, you could say it's been received while, I mean, both um, Ino Korongwana, before we get into that finance ministry mm -hmm, in mm -hmm. greater detail, Ino Korongwana and Gwede Mandashe are the only two ministers remaining in their uh, previous portfolios being finance as well as mineral resources. Now, zooming in on our finance, a number of analysts have welcomed the move, saying that both Ino Korongwana and David Masondo, his deputy, mm -hmm. work very well together, and so financial markets and investors would have um, be would be rather happy with this move, as it also signifies a continuity in uh, fiscal prudence and economic structural reforms. Another important thing to note is that the Department of of public enterprises is no more, just as uh, uh, Praveen Godan also resigned. Now, the functions of uh, that department in particular will now be taken up by the minister in the presidency, Kumbuzo Nchabini. Mm. Now, of course, we need to bring it back to business and how this um, really affects the companies that operate in South Africa's uh, macroeconomic environment. How has big business received the, the new cabinet appointments. Big businesses have welcomed the move. We had both business leadership South Africa as well as business unity South Africa saying that it all goes down or comes down rather to the uh, parties that have been elected or the members of the different parties that have been elected to work closer together. There have been concerns, of course, raised around the fiscal pressures as now we have a uh, bigger government. But all in all, mm. they are quite happy about the elected members. Let's take a look at what the CEO designate of BUSA, uh, Kulegani Mate, has to say on the matter. The announcement signals that South African leaders are now ready to put aside their differences and tackle the social and economic challenges facing the country. We are aware that not everybody will be happy with the appointments, but we call on all South Africans to unite behind the cabinet, uh, which will need all of our support to implement the practical evidence-based policies which will deliver sustainable, inclusive economic development, job creation, investment, and social development.